Hello and welcome to this presentation on how to pass an online class presented by the Counseling Center. Some quick information here about our Counseling Center. There's several ways you can learn more or reach out to us. That can either be done um, on the phone, you can always send us an email for more information or to set up an appointment, or you can check out our website at mnsu.edu slash counseling. There's a ton of different resources we have on our website, a lot of information about self-help, some self-guided stuff, or just a ton of different like community resources too if that's something you're looking for. So don't hesitate to give us a call or reach out or even check out what we have to offer on our website if you're looking for a little bit more. So a quick outline today, uh, we're really gonna focus on like what are online classes and why are they so present right now? We're gonna talk about some mental health concerns in relation to switching to online formats, advantages and disadvantages of, advantages of online classes, and then some tips for succeeding with these online classes. So we know that nowadays, online classes are pretty common. And given the uh, pandemic that we're going through right now, having to switch from that face-to-face -face interaction to online is way different, something we might not be used to. A lot of us didn't come to college uh, to sit behind a computer all day, right? Not attend class. So this is definitely a big change for many people. And maybe it's a welcome relief for some of you. Maybe you are enjoying these online classes and think it's the greatest thing ever since you don't have to go to class now. You can just go to your computer and log on from there. But we know for many, switching to the online format has been hard and it continues to be hard. And it's a concern that many people have moving forward. Like what if this becomes the new norm and that we have to stick with online classes for quite a while yet? How are we gonna succeed? How are we gonna pass these classes? You know, it's so different from what we grew up with. It's so different from what we're used to. So in this presentation, like I said, we're really gonna kind of dig in, um, learn a bit more about the benefits of online classes, the challenges that it presents, and then provide some tips for successfully getting through some of these classes and how to kind of make it worth your while in these online classes. So just some quick mental health concerns. We know that when we switch from your traditional classroom, a face-to-face -face interaction, to now just sitting in your room by yourself behind a computer screen, there's a lot of isolation that comes from that. No, no longer are we seeing people on campus. No longer are we constantly talking to those people we sit by or having a discussion in present time with being able to look across the room and see who you're talking to. Now let's kind of switch to being all online and this creates a lot of isolation. Maybe you're in a class that is pretty individualized and there isn't much for discussion or interaction with those classmates or professors. And so you're really kind of feeling that isolation and that loneliness. This is a huge concern that we're noticing and taking note of, especially when we switch to these online formats. There's also the concern of security and privacy. When we're putting so much out there about ourselves, about you know where, where we're at, there's also the concern of like privacy. Instead of being able to just go to the classroom and appear as you are, you're now inviting your entire class into your home with you. This is very different. And it, it does invade on some of that privacy. No longer can we separate academics from home life. It's all combined now, right? We're bringing the classroom right into your home. And so there is a concern about cons security and privacy and what that looks like now. Depression, sadness, especially with changing to an online format, having to be, you know, in class all the time, but not in class because it's on your computer. It's gonna create a lot of sadness and confusion. There's also some anxiety. You know, we, we grew up in a traditional classroom. We know what that's like. 
And now when we're asked to switch over to an online format, or maybe our only option is an online format, that can, can create a lot of stress, anxiety, concern about what it's going to be like, what it's going to feel like, how it's going to work for you. Maybe you're concerned or anxious about passing these classes because it's completely different. You don't have that face-to-face -face component. So there is a great deal of anxiety that comes along with this. Attention problems, this one's huge. When we were in a traditional classroom, you know, we, we had the prompts of walking to class. We had, you know, the time to prepare ourselves while we were sitting there in the chairs waiting for the professor to start. We were more focused because we were surrounded by other people who were focused. Now, when we sit across from our computer, our attention seems to, you know, dissipate. It seems to focus on everywhere but maybe that online lecture. Attention problems can cause a lot of concern, can cause grades and participation to go down. And it can relate back to just plain old mental health concerns, you know, feeling kind of depressed or anxious or confused about why you're, you're not being able to focus or hold that attention in class anymore. We also notice that there's changes in our sleeping patterns. In a traditional um, setting, when we had to get up for class, go to class regularly, we were on a pretty good schedule. We knew you know, we had that class at 9 a.m. and then maybe 11 and 2, and you knew when to do your homework and when to go to bed. Now there's going to be so many changes. You get to set your schedule all over again. And no one's telling you when you need to watch that lecture, when you need to have that homework necessarily done by, in what time frame. Well, maybe you switched and went back home and you're in a different time zone now. And so you're trying to juggle what time everything is at because it's all different. Maybe you're completely across the globe now and so your sleeping patterns are confused because you're confused. Instead of having an assignment due, at 12 o'clock midnight, maybe that's due now at 4 a.m. for you. This changes everything, and it puts a lot of complication and confusion into our sleeping patterns. <clears throat> There's also some physical health complications that we notice too when we switch to an online format. There's a lot more strain in our eyes, constantly staring at a computer screen, online lectures, typing out papers, reading your textbook on the computer, that puts a lot of strain on our eyes. And that can lead then to headaches. Um, you know, strain on the eyes might result in feeling kind of dizzy or um, anything else too. It's different for everyone. We also find ourselves sitting all day. When we had to go to the classroom, you know, we were up in between classes, um, walking from building to building, walking from our cars to our classrooms, to our homes, anything like this. Now everything's all in one place. Maybe the bathroom's only two steps away. We don't have to drive anywhere or park back in free parking and then walk all the way to our classroom. Everything is right there. And so we find ourselves sitting way more all day long. There's also the strain then on, on our neck in our back, or maybe even on our legs. You know, I'm constantly looking down at a computer screen. Maybe it's you're hunched over a computer, or maybe your desk and chair aren't balanced correctly like a normal classroom desk and chair would be. And so there's a putting a lot of strain on your neck or your back. So these are just some of the mental health concerns that we're noticing, taking note of, and maybe you're noticing too. And so these are all concerns that we have. And so moving forward, we're going to talk about like the benefits of online classes, the challenges, and then how to kind of resolve some of these things. And if you're noticing some of these mental health concerns, um, you know, take note of them, see what you can do to kind of alleviate some of that concern or that pressure or strain. And if nothing else, you know, talk to a counselor. You know, kind of see how we can get through some of these anxious symptoms 
or those feelings of isolation and loneliness. First, we have some advantages of online classes. The first one we notice is flexibility. This is a great one to take notice of because we get to set our schedule now, right? We're no longer told that we have to wake up at 8 a.m. For a, for a lecture class. We have the flexibility to decide when we're gonna log on, when we're gonna get those assignments done, when we're gonna watch those lectures, read those notes, things like that. There's so many more advantages with being able to set our own schedule, having to have that flexibility. Maybe you know you're not a morning person, but that was the only time that your classes were available. And so now you have the flexibility to maybe sleep in and then do your homework in the afternoon when it's more easy for you to focus and get that done. Another advantage is that now, maybe more classes are made available. You know, if we're not confined to only 12 seats in a classroom, because we can have maybe 20 people on the same class because they're all using their own computers at home, this just means that more classes may be made available. It might be more fun to get in a class maybe with your friends then, if, you know, classes allow. Um, no longer are you having to juggle around the um, frustration of needing two classes, but they're only offered at the same time. So maybe this is an advantage to you. Maybe you're going to be able to get all your classes in without the frustration of scheduling. Another advantage is there's no more need to panic about getting lost when you're trying to find your classroom. Maybe you're a new freshman coming into college right now and you don't understand yet what building is what or where those classrooms are and you're concerned about this. But if we look and we only have online options available to us, there's no panic. There's no concern about getting lost or not making it from your 9 a.m. class to your 1015 class or anything like this because now we can just be online. We can go from one classroom platform to the next without really having to get up and get lost. The final advantage I have listed here, I'm sure you would add plenty more to this list. But the last advantage I have here is that today's students are already tech savvy. You guys already know and understand the internet and how to work through complications or problems that many others might not know, especially if they haven't grown up with technology. You understand and you get it. And this is a huge advantage to you because it's gonna be easier to just log on, plug in and get going instead of some people who are gonna struggle more. Maybe they didn't grow up with technology in their lives. Maybe this is just a new concept to them altogether. And so it might be a little more of a disadvantage and a struggle for them. But we know that today's students, they're tech savvy. They grew up with this. They grew up with a keyboard in front of them. And so typing those papers might not be a challenge for them, especially since they've been doing it for so long now. And while many of those advantages do sound really great and really positive, we can't forget that there are disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that you must set your own schedule now. And so we know that this can be a challenge for some people. It might be hard for people to know when it's time to log in for class, when it's time to focus in and get those assignments done or to study for those tests. Setting your own schedule can be really hard at times. Online classes can be really time consuming. No longer are we going to a classroom and then maybe going to the library to study and finish up homework and then we're done. Now with online classes, it might seem more time consuming because now all of that is at home. Now we have to read on our textbooks and take notes and then log on to a lecture and participate in the discussion board and do some assignments and some homework and some studying for that class. And then we have to do it again for
for the next two classes that we're in as well, online classes might seem way more time consuming than compared to your traditional classrooms. We also know that it's really difficult to pay attention at times. And so in the normal classroom, like we talked about before, it might be easier to focus in, know what you're going to do within the next, you know, hour in that classroom and pay attention. But now when we're at home, it's so much easier to pick up our phones or scroll through Facebook. Maybe, you know, we just have a lot going on in our minds, it's just harder to pay attention once that lecture starts. Paying attention with online classes can be a huge disadvantage and a huge challenge for many people. We also know that there's little to no control over techno technical issues. So if there's issues with your internet or something on campus, you know, one of those modes of communication, or maybe the internet um, connection is not good, or whatever it might be. Technical issues, they can be so frustrating. They can cause a lot of stress and concern, and maybe even some anxiety, and since we're not able to control them. And so this can be a huge disadvantage and a huge fear that many people face regularly, when in an online class. And then the last one we have listed here, although you might have more to add to this list as well, is the lack of in-person interactions. When we talked about it with the mental health slide, it's all the same here in the disadvantages slide. We no longer are interacting with people in the dining hall. We're no longer interacting with people that we sit next to in class. We don't have those conversations or those debates or those discussions in person anymore. Now they're maybe over text, maybe they're over a discussion, an online discussion board. Maybe they're just non-existent at all anymore. This can be very frustrating, very isolating, and very confusing at times for people. Especially those people who are more extroverted and they like to have those interactions and they like to have those discussions or that ability to stop in the middle of a lecture and ask a question. That's just not an option anymore. And so this can be a huge disadvantage that many people face when they're asked to switch to an online class. Now we're going to transition into some tips for succeeding. So we want you to su succeed with your online classes. We know it's going to be a challenge. We know that you know I have advantages for you. But before we can get to those advantages, we need to learn how to manage, how to get through some of these hard things. So that way, it'll be easier to succeed. To do that, uh, the first tip we have here is to treat any online course like it was a real course. If you're signed up for an online class, you get to determine what time that class starts. And so maybe you're going to set it that it starts the same time every day. Maybe you're going to set it that it starts at 1030 every day of the week. That is treating it like a real course. You log in at the same time. You have a schedule of when you need to do stuff. And you're going to focus. You're going to focus in and treat it like a real lecture course or a real face-to-face um, -face course. This is going to change your outlook on what that class is going to look like, how you're going to participate, and how it's going to go for you in the end. Hold yourself accountable. This is our second tip. If you hold yourself accountable, really treat this course like it means something. You're going to succeed. Remind yourself, too, that you're paying for these courses still, even if they're on the online format. You know, they're still getting you closer to your degree. They're still getting you closer to that graduation date. And so hold yourself accountable. Know that it's still important to be in this class, even if it's not in the format that you wanted, but just continue to hold yourself accountable, get those assignments turned in on time, um, study for those exams, whatever it may be, but hold yourself accountable, have those high standards for yourself. Make sure you have the right technology. And so this one is definitely gonna take away some of that 
anxiety or concern or stress. Try to make sure you have a reliable internet connection. And make sure you have the right platforms for all of your classes. Maybe even writing down access codes or links or saving them on a sticky note somewhere on your laptop. This will make sure that you have everything you need before class starts, before something's due, and that you don't have to worry about having an internet connection or something like that go out on you when you're in the middle of something important. And so just a couple more tips there, um, just of how we can take away some of that concern or anxiety about that technology piece. And then no two, we can't control it. We can't control if our internet decides to be unreliable one day or go in and out on us when we're in the middle of something important. But knowing that we tried and that, you know, we're going to make it through this no matter what, keep that in mind even when, when you're having issues with technology. Another tip here, read the syllabus for each course. There's going to be a ton of information in that syllabus. And usually you read it in person, in class, usually during those first couple of days or whatever. Still continue to read the syllabus. Check it for information on assignments or exams or grading or anything that you have a question on. Read the syllabus. Odds are the information is going to be in there. It's going to help direct you um, with moving forward at this class and succeeding in it. Write in a planner, have a schedule, whatever it is. If you don't already do this, you're probably going to want to. You're going to want to have somewhere where you can go to that's going to tell you um, when assignments are due, what you need to do for the week. It's going to make life a lot easier if you have a planner or a schedule. It's going to help you know when big assignments are due and when you need to start them or all those little things that you might forget about because you're not in the classroom anymore to have classmates or professors reminding you about them. So now might be a good time to start using a schedule or a planner. This can be either like in on paper, in a notebook, maybe it's on the computer, link to your email to get reminders or anything like that. But if you really want to succeed and you want to make sure you don't forget about anything, I highly suggest using a planner or some type of schedule to keep everything organized. Check your email regularly. So maybe when we were in the traditional classroom setting, it wasn't as necessary to check that email all the time because if we had an announcement, we got it from the professor or we heard it from a classmate when we were waiting for class to start or whatever it may be. But now we don't necessarily have that anymore. And so checking your email for announcements or updates or other types of information is going to be necessary during this time, especially if you're in an online class or multiple online classes. Keep in contact with your professors and classmates. They're the ones you still want to turn to if you have questions or concerns or anything else. And you stay in contact with them this semester is going to go by so much faster. You're still going to learn all that information. And you're going to have those people to turn to when it gets complicated or confusing. Or if you're having internet issues or whatever it might be. If you're in contact with your professors and classmates, kind of letting them know how it's going, things might go a little smoother for you then. And it might be easier to succeed in those classes. Again, sit, setting a schedule and sticking to it. If you're going to set a schedule, you're going to write it in a planner when you're going to go to class versus everything else. If you plan out your day, stick to it. Use a schedule. It's going to help you organize your day, manage your time, kind of reduce some of that stress and anxiety too then. Practice time management. So this goes along with setting the schedule and sticking to it. If we're able to know what's necessary to be done and how long we have to do it, it's going to help us not stress about when we need to turn assignments in or what's due when or anything like that. Time management is also going to help with the procrastination that many of us experience. 
It's going to help us manage our time so much better. If we set that schedule, stick to it, and follow good time management practices. Ask for help. There's no shame in asking anyone for help, whether that's a professor, a classmate, a roommate, or even a counselor for help. If we're really struggling, there are resources, there are people out there who is gonna help us. Maybe a class you're in right now isn't gonna be a good fit for you online and would be better in person. Maybe then it's time to talk with your academic advisor and see about switching classes before it's too late. You wanna make sure that you're succeeding in your classes and if having it in online formats just not gonna work for you, don't be afraid to ask for help. It's not admitting that you're a failure and it's not a bad thing to do. It's actually really important and really beneficial to ask for help because it helps us learn and it helps us get what we need. A good tip we have here is to set up a home office or a study space. Don't be doing your homework while sitting in bed. Don't be doing it, you know, all over the place, maybe outside one day, in the kitchen the next day, in the living room the next day, in bed the next. Try to set up an, a home office, a quiet space to study and really focus in on those lectures. If you set up a home office too, it's gonna help you stay organized. All the information, all the necessary equipment, it's going to be there. It's going to be easy to access. You won't have to like jump up in the middle of a lecture to go grab a calculator. It'll all be right there in your home office, your study space, in a desk. It's really going to help you stay organized, stay efficient, and um, keep everything together in one place. Again, just staying organized really helps succeed in classes. If you have all your class materials set out, you know where all your textbooks are. This is gonna help you find what you need when you're logging into that class, when you're gonna study for an exam, or maybe you're gonna have an open book exam and it's necessary to have your notebook and a calculator and maybe some other equipment and a textbook right there. If you're organized and have all of that available to you, it's going to make it go so much smoother and it's going to reduce some of that anxiety we have then since it's all there and you don't have to worry about jumping up in the middle of an exam to go find something. Try to eliminate distractions. Even if you're setting up a home office or a study space in a, a shared living space, maybe with other roommates or family members, try to eliminate distractions. If you have a bunch of um, stuff on your desk that's going to distract you like fidget toys or something that's like super distracting and not helpful maybe we need to eliminate those maybe we need to remove the tv from the space so that way you're not distracted or wanting to turn that on in the middle of a lecture so trying to eliminate distractions is going to help you focus in better it's going to help you um, realize that you're in class and that you're working hard towards something and not, not pull that attention to something else. And then finally, figure out how you learn best and do that, right? And so maybe you learn best in the morning. So then tailor your schedule around that. Maybe you learn best in the later afternoon, evening hours because you've had a chance to get all the other tasks done around the house, maybe for a job or anything else. Figure out how you learn best. Maybe you learn best after a quick nap. Maybe you learn best after eating supper or eating a snack. And so whatever works for you, figure it out. Take some time to try some different things, see how it goes for you. Maybe your study space is in the wrong position. Maybe it's because you're staring out a window and that window is so distracting for you. So maybe figuring out that, well, maybe we need to move our study space. That might be necessary. But if we figure out how we learn best, this is gonna help us succeed in our classes and succeed academically overall. Oops. And then actively participate. We know that with our online classes, it is necessary to pay attention, contribute, participate, whether it's through a, 
a verbal discussion or an online written discussion. But if we're actively participating, that means we're engaging with the material, we're engaging with our classmates, and we're using all that information we've learned from our textbooks and our lectures and everything else, we're putting it to practice. We're seeing how we can use that to better ourselves, further our knowledge. And if we actively participate in our online classes, it's gonna feel good, it's gonna feel natural, it's gonna feel like that face-to-face -face classroom setting again, because we're actively participating. We're still getting out those lectures, out of those discussions, and everything else, what we need to succeed. So that is our presentation here on how to succeed in an online class. I hope some of that information was helpful for you, gave you something to think about and try if you're continuing on with some online classes. Um, once again, if you wanna reach out to our counseling center, you can do that by phone or email or checking out our website. Um, we're always here to help you. And if you're really struggling with your online classes, or have some concerns about those online classes. We're here to help you. We're here to talk it through with you. And so don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we look forward to meeting you and working with you. So thank you for participating and listening to this lecture um, and have a great rest of your day.